Hello, this is Tim Sandal, and it's great to be here with a, a new video. This is the uh, first video I've recorded for 2023. And in this video, I'd like to have a look at um, the art of microbiology. So this is how different creative people and scientists have used the natural beauty of the microbial world in combination with culture media and other forms to create um, different art forms. And a lot of this is based on um, agar art. Um, and this is where the agar plate acts as a canvas. And here the uh, artist can exploit pigmented or fluorescent bacteria and yeast to almost like represent a paint if you like. And this uh, allows some wonderful patterns and uh, some of these have a, a winter theme um, which is again appropriate for this time of year. Um, if you want to try this yourself then in order to preserve a piece of microbial art after of course sufficient incubation time then it, it's important that the microbial culture is sealed with something like um, epoxy or, or some other similar kind of resin like material. Okay, so let's have a look at our first uh, piece of art. And this particular one, which we've got the uh, winter colours of green and, and, and red and some brown, and this was created by um, a Petri dish artist called uh, Stephanie Monord. And um, she was able here to predict the patterns in which fungi would grow. And here we have two particular species of fungi. We have Aspergillus. So Aspergillus um, is a genus of several hundred different species of filamentous fungi found in different climates worldwide. And uh, human civilization has known about Aspergillus for a long time. It was first catalogued in 1729 uh, by the priest and biologist Pierre Antonio Michel, and um, he viewed fungi under a microscope and he was reminded of the shape of the uh, filamentous fungus resembled uh, Aspergillum, which is the holy water sprinkler associated with. Um, Catholic Church and that's the origin of the word um, aspergillus. The other fungus that we've got here is penicillium and this is a, a well-known genus of Ascomitis fungi. Uh, it's a common part of the microbiome uh, in the natural environment. It's, it's a source of food spoilage and of course it's uh, essential for um, drug production for the production of antibiotics. Okay, so let's move on to have a look at a, a second uh, example. Okay, so here we have a, a different uh, fungus. So this is Nisosartora, uh, and this particular species that's been used to create this snowman shape is Pseudofisheri. Uh, and this was a fungus that was actually first isolated from an autopsy, uh, rather grisly kind of uh, origin. But it was from a fungal lesion uh, that had been occurring in, in a human neck vertebrae. And this is also um, an ascos forming uh, fungus. And the ascophore morphology is, is very similar to um, aspergillus. Okay, so let's uh, move away from the, the uh, uh, kind of more focused winter theme. And let's go to uh, Van Gogh-inspired uh, art. And for these pictures, to create these wonderful um, colour frames of swirling patterns, then uh, Proteus Barabilis has been used. And this is a gram-negative bacteria. And it's well known for its ability to swarm across the surface of an agar plate. And this swarming motion forms a striking bullseye pattern. 
Uh, now, clinically, this organism is, is a pathogen of the urinary tract and it is a particular risk factor for patients who are receiving um, catheters. But in this context, it gives us some uh, wonderful visual um, images. Okay, so let's move on to something different. Now look at this, this is quite spectacular. And this is was actually the winner of the 2015 um, um, ASM agar art competition. And uh, this was uh, developed by uh, Mehmet Burkham and Maria Penel. And here, various species of bacteria have been used. So we've got a Bacillus subtilis that gives us the cream to brown colour. We've got Chromobacterium violensum that gives us the violet colour. We've got some Escherichia coli, which is largely given the sort of translucent nature. There's Micrococcus luteus, which has given us the yellow. Micrococcus roseus, which has given us the pink. There's some Proteus mirabilis. Some Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which has given us a slightly brown intonation. We have Pseudomonas fluorescens, which is given a natural blue-green pigment due to the um, specific pigment that's associated with, with fluorescence, which is pyroviridine. Uh, we've also got Serratia marcescens that's giving us some pink to orange colour, some Staphylococcus aureus for yellow, and Vibrio fischeri, which is, gives us that kind of bioilluminescent um, tinge to, to the picture. So this is a really spectacular piece of um, agar art on display. Okay, so moving back to fungi. And here we have uh, the use of Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which um, gives us a slight, slightly yellow intonation. We've also got Aspergillus flavus, giving a slightly sort of brown or green colour. Aspergillus orasis, which is given a yellow colour. And then we've got Orobastidium polaris, which is given the black. Candida albicans for the whitish buff, which is kind of helping the image to rise from the surface. There's also some Cladosporium herbarum um, and some Epicocum nigerium as well. So a wonderful kind of fusion of, of, of um, filamentous fungi and yeasts in this uh, picture that gives a kind of truly abstract art effect. But there's things that can be done with microbial art moving away, away from, from agar. And, and here we have a glass microbe. And this is one of the magnificent sculptures created by Luc Geram. And he's been involved in a number of um, quite extraordinary um, art projects that have um, excited and inspired um, many visitors in museum settings. And this particular glass sculpture of a microbe is Escherichia coli. So it's a gram-negative rod-shaped bacterium and it's common to our lower intestines and, and in humans and many warm-blooded um, organisms. And in, in endotherms, most strains of E. coli are um, harmless, but some can cause um, harm, such as uh, most notably the food poisoning, food poisoning variant of E. coli, which is serotype 015787. Um, so we can take in the, the kind of the, the beauty of E. coli with all the flagella uh, coming off from it and uh, even closer the sort of fimbria and, and, and so on. So let's jump back to some uh, agar art. And here we have uh, a kind of variant again of the sort of Van Gogh uh, sunflowers. And this was created by uh, Frederick Harms. Who's, who's a microbiologist who's based at um, the Aquatic Research Institute in Zurich, Switzerland. And to this, um, powdered charcoal's been added to the agar to give, give a sort of darker background colour. And um, Harms has kind of done some really uh, great work here to try and capture the uh, broad, vivid brushstrokes of a Van Gogh painting to kind of create the the sunflower effect. And interestingly, uh, all of the organisms in this particular image were um, organisms that the artist found in a 
toilet. Okay, so let's look at a uh, more fluorescent example of um, agar art here. And we've got some a truly outstanding uh, piece here, which is supposed to be a San Diego beach uh, scene. And here various bacterial strains expressing different fluorescent proteins have been used. And this came from the laboratory of the Nobel winning uh, biochemist Roger Thiessen. And here an eight colour palette of bacterial colonies have been used and, and each one's been uh, derived. So they're expressing their fluorescent proteins and, and these proteins are derived from GFP and the red fluorescent uh, coral protein DS red. Uh, we've also got uh, emerald, citrine, M orange, M apple, M cherry and M grape which are all uh, genetic variants uh, designed to give these truly impressive um, colours. So let's have a look at other examples from the American Society of Microbiology uh, agar art competition and this runs um, every year. And here competitors around the world are showing their artistic skills and, and here's some examples of um, entries uh, in, in recent years. So again, the media is acting as a palette and there's some truly impressive um, uh, examples of both bacterial and fungal art um, here. But it's also possible to go deeper into the art scene so here we have some examples of um, microbial art from Zachary Kopfer and he invented a new medium and this combines a photographic process with uh, microbiological um, practices and the term that uh, the artist is using is bacteriography so bacteriography consists of shooting radiation through a negative onto a petri dish covered with bacteria and the end product is, is a plate of bacteria that then reflects back that photographic image. So it's a process that's similar to what happens in dark room photography and here we have uh, the image of um, Albert Einstein beautifully and variedly captured on different um, agar plates. And this kind of concept of uh, doing agar art in different ways can be taken to uh, various different levels. So here there's a whole um, array of images created uh, by Julia Krelik. And these are all uh, microscopic staining images. So the, the artist has taken a number of images through the microscope uh, that appear to give a truly um, aesthetic style um, but of organisms in their natural um, place. So this is to um, just show the array of the microbial world through various forms of um, staining and uh, that looks quite impressive and if you see this image um, in, in its full size then it, then it really does stand out quite wonderfully. Okay, so uh, this is a uh, fungus again. Again, uh, uh, Aspergillus. This is Aspergillus orase. Um, and this is known as the Koji mold. Um, so it's the fungus that's used to make uh, a lot of foods associated with Japanese cuisine. So like sake, soya sauce, uh, miso sauce, and so on. And this fungus. Um, it's just been captured here using various colours to capture the, it, it, its beauty. The, you can see the, the hyphae, the spore head and the release of spores, uh, which are then formed off to create new colonies. And this comes from the artists uh, Scott Chilemski and Roberto Coulter, who, who have taken this, this image um, and uh, shown it in its um, natural glory. Okay, so it's coming to the end, but just uh, an, another image to show you, and this is uh, called Bacterial Flowers, and it comes from an artist called uh, Lev Tismering, who is a research scientist at the Biocircus Institute. And here, 
um, we see that when two different strains of bacteria grow together and they can be appropriately colorized and uh, shown then we can get some very varied in images some quite miraculous images and almost flower like uh, formations and this is a available as a, as a sort of large display and it's on show in the San Diego Natural History Museum. Okay, so this brings the, the video to the end. It's my first video of 2023. Uh, I'm Tim Sandal, and what we've looked at is uh, bacteria, fungi, microbiology as art, uh, both beautiful and uh, exciting, and a different way of looking at the microbial world. So thank you for watching, and please subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Thank you very much. Goodbye.